Hello and welcome to episode 88 of my podcast all about knitting and crochet and my yarn shop here in Wiesbaden, Germany. I'm Kiko and today is March 15th, 2021. Today I'm wearing all my favorite colors, blue and white and turquoise. And um, those are two fairly new um, things. The virus, um, this is actually the first time I'm wearing the virus shawl. I've worn the pullover, I've shown the pullover before, so it's not that new. But there's also another reason I'm wearing the pullover today. But first of all, the virus shawl. I'd shown that as a finished object last week or a few weeks ago. Um, yeah, two weeks ago. So I thought even though it's not really warm and uh, spring-like yet, it's warm enough if I can um, combine it with a wool jumper and um, the colors go together so nicely. I felt that was the perfect combination for today. Um, the pattern is called Virus. It's a free pattern um, on the internet and it's um, a nice pattern that's um, very easy to crochet once you understand what's going on. Um, yeah, at first I wasn't too sure about those big holes in there, but now I really got used to the pattern and I like it. And I think especially in summer, it'll be very nice to have this just as a layering piece when it gets just a tad cooler. It's a pure cotton yarn. It's the first time I used a gradient that's pure cotton. I really enjoyed working with it. Yeah, so that's the shawl. And then my snowflake pullover. I knitted that. Um, must have been sometime last year. This was an Opal subscription yarn that I fell in love with um, when I showed it on screen so that several people offered to give me their, um, their ball because with this subscription you only ever get one ball of every color so that wouldn't wouldn't have been enough to to knit a pullover but because I could swap several um, balls in that color I decided to make a pullover and I wanted to put some white snowflakes on it because I thought that was a perfect wintry combination and uh, when I finished the pullover I still had so much yarn left over that I decided to knit a skirt and I forgot to show that last week I had knitted on it I haven't knit on it last week, but the week before, and then I put it in the shop and I put it out of sight and I completely forgot to show it last week. So to make sure I remember this week, that's part of the reason I put on this pullover. So I can show the skirt or um, what I have of the skirt so far. Yeah, so that's what I am wearing today. And then on to finished objects. And all my finished objects today are green, which is quite funny because I don't usually knit so many green things, but well, sometimes it happens. So my first finished object is no surprise. It's my qualifying pair of socks for the Sock Madness 2021. The pattern is called Sembon Sakura. Um, it's a beautiful pattern with these flowers. Um, where you can knit, um, where you can put beads in. You don't have to bead all the flowers, so the ones next to the heel, I did not put did not put in beads, but all the others I put in beads. I thought, um, yeah, they're not that bad. And as you can see, these are um, not um, identical socks, but the flowers have switched places, and that was one of the requirements for passing um, the qualifying or to qualify for the sock madness and I'm happy to announce that I did qualify <laughs> so I finished the sock I put the pictures up on Ravelry and I sent um, my email with the link to my um, Ravelry page and they wrote back that I qualified um, maybe some of you have noticed that I've put the socks on different size sock blockers and that's because um, I wanted to show you what size I actually knit. So I did not knit the socks so that they would fit um, a specific person, especially as I'm going to donate them for to the um, organization who help women with ovarian cancer. They collect green socks to give to those women um, along with um, information and help and, and offers and whatever. Um, 
but I knit to the minimum requirements of the sock madness. So I had to use, this was the minimum amount of sti stitches I had to use. This is the minimum amount of repeats, both for the leg and the foot. And I wasn't quite sure what size I would end up with. So um, this is a sock blocker for the German shoe size 38, 39. And it's a bit loose on the blocker. But I think this is the minimum length that you have to achieve with your knitting. So even if you knit the same, if you knit the right amount of rows, but you don't get the size um, long enough because you knit too tightly or your gauge is off, then um, I think you wouldn't qualify. But um, for me, I got, it's a bit bigger than the minimum length. And so it's a bit longer than this sock blocker is but I have um, I usually put them on this size because I have two sock blockers in that size so for showing off I like to have them on the same size blocker and this is the next size up so this is 37 38 no 38 39 and this is 40 41 and I only have one blocker in that size I will have to get another one at some point but um, haven't gotten around to ordering them yet and as you can see, they also fit on this blocker. They might be just a tad tight. So I think that the size I actually got was in between, which would be like a 39.40 European size, um, which is a bit too big for me because my shoe size is 37 and a half. Um, but I could wear them on top of another pair of socks if I wanted to. But as I said, I'm going to donate them and when I I might knit the pattern for myself again because I really enjoy knitting them and then I'll just leave off some of those rows and then they should fit perfectly. Um, yeah, I think I already showed you last week um, what the pattern itself looks like. It's the interesting heel with the decreases down the middle of the sole which I think um, make just make them perfect. And then the toe I had knit last week, um, it sort of continues this four cable pattern into the toe. And then you have the decreases left and right of that pattern, which gives it a really nice look. It's not that difficult to knit once you know what you're doing. Um, yeah, and I really enjoyed making these. And I think it's a very beautiful pattern. Um, and as I said last week, as soon as the sock madness is over, you'll be able to buy the pattern and knit socks like this for yourself or for whoever you want to knit for. So that was my first finished object. And I have a second one. And that is this beautiful shawl that I test knit for Sarah, Sarah K knit, Sarah knit. And it's the shawl with this beautiful leaf edge. Um, and last week I was talking about how I find it really difficult to see or to, to, to measure this edge because that's what you're supposed to do. Um, I was supposed to knit until this edge is one meter 50 and, uh, and then I could knit the last pattern repeat, which is just a bit different from the other repeats because I don't knit this stem going into the next leaf because as there won't be another leaf you just don't have any knit stitches here and then once the leaf is done it's um cast off so yeah and i was knitting on it last week and then i decided well i think this is about the size i want and uh, i think i'll finish here now um, as soon as i find some time i can do the last pattern repeat and then yesterday I finally checked to find out what the deadline was for the test knit. And I realized that de the deadline was two days before. So yesterday I really quickly sat down and knit the last pattern repeat and then quickly washed and blocked it. I was pretty sure it, it would be dry today and it is. And um, yeah, I'm happy to say that the shawl is done it's a very nice size it's not huge but because of the way the increases are worked it's rather deep which is something I like a lot I know some people don't like it if it's too deep if they wear the shawl this way around but I think it's okay if it's if if I have a lot of fabric in the front if I want to wear it like that like if I put a jacket on top and if I just wear it around my shoulder the way I'm wearing this shawl right now I also like 
to have it really long um, and deep so um, that my back's actually warm. The colour is a bit pale on screen. It's a bit, um, yeah, it's it's um, it's not really darker, but it's a bit of a stronger green in reality. But it's a very nice colour anyway. Um, not my usual colour, but I like it. And the um, the yarn is so soft. I knit it quite loosely, and I really like um, loose knitted garter stitch in a shawl because it's so squishy and. Um, and soft. Yeah, so another test knit finished. Um, and I'm really happy the pattern was well written, um, except for one little hiccup right at the beginning. There was there were no problems. And um, yeah, so I hope this will be published soon. And once it is published, I will link to it on my Ravelry page so you can get the pattern if you want to. I'm not quite sure whether she will um, publish it in English as well or just in German. Um, we'll see. Yeah, so that was that were my finished objects. Then on to works in progress. As usual, I'll start with the socks. And there's three pair of socks that you already know. I won't say too much about them if you want to know more about them. I already talked about them last week and probably a few weeks before. These are the longitudinal socks that are um, knit sideways socks. And um, last week I showed you that I had knit the, hit the middle of the sock right where this orange line is. I've added a few rows, not too many, but now I have finished, the, um, maybe I'll show you in the toe. I finished the bit that is knit straight and I've ju just done the first decrease. So um, where I had increases on this side, I have to do decreases on that side. And um, now that I don't have to count the rows um, anymore, I can just knit on that on the go and just remember to do the decreases where the stitch markers are. I really love using stitch markers. Um, there's a lot less counting and thinking involved when you use stitch markers. So that's sock number two, uh, number one. Then sock number two were the um, structured a little bit structured socks um, that was another test knit but it was basically finished with the first sock and I'm just now finishing the second sock the pattern has been released it is released has been released in German and English so if you want to knit it no problem by the way that was Opal subscription yarn this is Opal subscription yarn and I finished knitting the heel so last week I think I was just about to start knitting the heel I knit the heel flap and the heel turn. I finished the gusset, which are these decreases, and now I just knit to, I can knit straight. So another thing I don't have to think about too much, um, just have to check with the first sock how many rows I need to knit, and then I can continue on that. And then the third sock I'm knitting on is, um, this black dragon yarn by Opal um, and that's the warm up one of the warm up patterns from the sock madness and this is also the second sock in the pair and I also finished knitting the heel which is again this this um, different heel construction I finished the increases the heel turn and now I need to knit a bit a few centimeters straight so no thinking about the knitting here except for counting the rows um, so I don't miss the point where I have to put in another color work pattern. Yeah, so just continue knitting on these and then I have two new cast-ons. <laughs> I didn't want to cast on too many socks um, because of the sock madness but um, the qualifying round still goes on until this Saturday and I don't know how long um, they will, are going to need um, to check all the socks and to put the teams together so I am guessing it will take at least another week until the next um, pattern drops and the next round starts or the first round starts so um, yeah I thought I can get away with casting on a few new things. 
<laughs> so this week I had two finished objects. I have two new cast-ons. So that's at least keeping it um, balanced. I'm not starting more than I'm casting off, which is something that I'm trying to avoid for the time being. I'm still aiming at finishing more than I cast on um, so I can pick up some of my old whips, but we'll see about that. Now, um, the reason I cast this on is that my cousin asked for a pair of wrist warmers. Um, or rather, she um, showed me a pair of wrist warmers that she had worn so much that it had a big hole and she asked if I could fix it. And I said I could fix it, but that would be a lot of work and not really worth um, the time and energy because they've been worn so much. Even if I fix the one hole, they probably would have a new hole in a fairly short time. And I said, I'd rather knit a new pair for her. So I sent her a picture with um, six different balls of opal yarn in colorful colors because she likes it really colorful. And then she picked this color. And at first I wanted to knit a pattern that um, I had sort of written down for wrist warmers or fingerless mitts um, that um, yeah the original mittens fingerless mittens are from a very old book but there you knit every finger and that's a lot of work so I changed it into fingerless mitts that's what I originally wanted to do but then I remembered that I had um, gotten this book as a present in January and I hadn't knit anything out of that book yet and it's a very beautiful book um, originally I wanted to, to the I planned that the first project out of this book should be the baby jacket once the new opal colors arrived but until last week they hadn't gotten here yet so I thought I will knit fingerless mitts for my cousin out of this book and I, I decided to do the cover a uh, model and um, then I looked at the pattern and I realized I'm supposed to use worsted weight yarn. Um, and the yarn I had shown my cousin was four ply yarn, but I have the same color as a DK weight yarn. So that's what I'm using now. So this is a DK weight yarn in German. It's called six ply. Um, and it's a color that she picked from the picture. And so I, I'm knitting a different size now because the yarn is a bit thinner than asked for. And um, this is what the mitt looks like now and I really really like the yarn I like the way the colors come together and these are the stitches that will work up to be the thumb and this is the pattern for the rest of the um, of the mitten and then what it looks like is um, and these are the, the increases I've done so far so um, difficult to show so these stitches will grow to be the thumb and these are the increases to make sure that I um, have more stitches that's why you knit a thumb gusset <laughs> it's a bit difficult to explain but I really like it I made them a bit longer than they are in the pattern so you can see um, they only did a bit of ribbing I did mine a bit longer and um, yeah, and I really enjoy knitting it. It's it's a really easy pattern, but it's it's different from the way you usually knit a thumb gusset, and I really enjoy doing that. And I'm already planning to knit um, the same mittens for myself once I finish these, maybe even in the same color. Talk about that in a minute. But um, yeah, so that's the first one of them, and I'm really happy about knitting them, which is quite fun because the book is called knit happy with self-striping yarn. So most of the yarns that you, she uses in the book has these um, proper stripes that that um, that are really clear stripes. And I will probably knit most of the things in opal yarn, which usually doesn't have that clear a stripe. So some of the stripes are fairly clear, but then you have these bits that are that have like a pattern in them and you have very quick changes sometimes. You have these tiny stripes in between so it's all of a it's it's more of a mix up but i still like it a lot and i think most of the patterns will look really nicely in um in opal yarn and if i have time oh and the new yarn i was waiting for arrived this morning so if there's a bit of time at the end of the episode i might just show you a few of the colors and um 
what I might knit out of the book. So, but first, let me show you the rest of the works in progress that I'm already working on. So the next new cast on that I cast on is actually another pair of socks. So even if I don't want to knit that many socks and I know the sock madness is going on, um, before I knew I was going to join the sock madness, I had already bought a sock club, another sock club by Mina Philip, um, the knitting expert. Um, so she likes to do those sock clubs where she designs socks and then releases them like one pattern a month or one pattern every other month something like that and two years ago I had bought both of her socks sock clubs so I had a new pattern every month and then last year I did not buy her sock patterns because I thought I already have so many sock patterns I shouldn't buy any more but then this year I was really intrigued by her idea to um, um, to knit she was she was going to design eight pair of socks um, inspired by eight different cities around the world. So um, the name of the sock club is Around the World in Eight Socks. And I really liked the idea. And then when she started talking about which cities she picked, I knew I had to have the collection and I bought it. And um, yeah, and then later on I joined the Sock Madness and Sock Madness starts in March and the Sock Club by Mina Phillips started in March. So it's a bit of a difficult thing. But as there's no time limit on Mina's patterns, I decided to do the sock madness first. But now I have time and I have to wait for the next pattern. So I decided to knit the first pair of her socks. And the first city that she um, chose um, as an inspiration for her socks was London. And I love London. I've been to London several times. And, um, and she picked the colors red and blue, which I think is very fitting. And... I am at the moment knitting, trying to knit most of the colors of this Opal Beauty yarn. It's really soft. It's It has this extract and vitamin E in it to make it good for your hands and good for wearing. And it's this, this red and blue with a bit of gray. I thought that would work really nicely. So last night I cast on the London socks by Mina Philip out of the sock club around the world in eight socks and I'm doing one two at a time it's not something that I do a lot but as I got these new circular needles by a very generous viewer um, I decided to use another one of them and um, they work really nicely and yeah so but when I'm not knitting the sock madness and not finishing up old socks <laughs> I have a new pair of socks to work on yeah, but these were all the new cast-ons I have to show you this week. Now on to some other, uh, to some more projects I am already working on. And um, so, oh, by the way, one of the patterns, this often one or two projects that I don't get around to doing because I'm knitting on so many. So last week it was the blue strider cowl um, that I did not get to knit on show that I hope I'll show that next week but I yeah I'll, I'll go on with the skirt so I can't forget that so as I said when I finished the pullover I still had so much yarn left that I decided to knit a skirt so this is the skirt and when I wear them together I hope it'll look as if I was wearing a dress and I had done all the increases I planned on doing and I started the pattern and the pattern is not the same that I have in the pullover, but it was the third pattern that I originally picked to put into the pullover, but then I realized I didn't have enough space. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have had an all over patterned pullover, which might have been nice, but well, decided to differently. But this now is the um, pattern. So I decided to put this third pattern into the skirt. And here you can see this is the beginning of like a big snowflake. Um, so that's sort of the combining element these are like small snowflakes and these are a bit bigger and these are going to be huge in comparison so these are the top corners like and then there's this pattern in between the snowflake bits I think this one pattern repeat is like from here to here so it's a fairly big pattern but as it's a skirt I have loads of stitches and um, 
that's the back. So my floats are fairly loose. I tend to leave my floats quite loosely. And, um, and I've been practicing holding one yarn in the left hand and one yarn in the right hand. And that's been working quite nicely. And um, yeah, now that I've shown you, <laughs> I can continue knitting on it. Um, as I'd forgotten to show it last week, I did knit on it last week. But now I can continue knitting on it. And um, the pattern is from a book called, oh, oh, there we go, Nordic Nordic Knitting Traditions. And in that book, you have, I think, the white is just one color, but the background, the background colors change deliberately. But as my yarn um, stripes by itself, I don't have to bother about that, and I can just use those two yarns and I still get this effect of having stripes in the background which I like. Yeah, so that's the skirt. Then I continue knitting on the mohair pullover that I hadn't worked on the week before and that's from Geek Knits. The verse sweater um, inspired by the TV series Firefly and I'm using several different mohair yarns help double so for the yoke, I used one single color and one glitter yarn. And then for the sleeve, I'm holding the basic color double. That's that color. And um, so in real life, the difference is a bit stronger than on screen, but you can see that it's just this little bit darker here. And so this is about half the sleeve, a little less. And I've decided now to change to the third color and that's that color i um, knit a big sh um, shawl or white scarf or stole or something in that color years ago and i want to hold one yarn the basic color and then one this second glitter yarn and i want to do the lower part of the sleeve and the lower part of the rest of the pullover as well in that color and originally i wanted to follow the pattern and do sleeve decreases but the sleeve is not very wide and I thought it might be quite nice to have it um, straight down and um, and either leave it hanging so it's like a bell sleeve or I might just do a few decreases right before I finish sort of to, to bring it together like that. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do yet so I'll just keep knitting for a while and then I will try it on and I will decide while I knit. Um, just one more, just a sh quick word on how I have set it up at the moment, because I've um, put the stitches for the front and back and the second sleeve on a really long cable. So that's one of the reasons I love these systems where you can screw the, the needle tips on, because if you use a really long cable, you can keep trying the pullover on without having to worry about stitches falling off and I marked the sleeve stitches and because when you start the sleeve or the front and back you cast on you can cast on new stitches to give it a bit more width um, I put those stitch markers in to to sort of uh, mark the stitches that I will cast on here so when I try the pullover on I can put one arm through here and one arm through there and I can try it on, I can see how the sleeve sits on my arm and then I can make good decisions about how long the sleeve needs to be. Yep, so that's that. And then the other pullover I am crocheting on is the um, test uh, crochet I'm doing for Heather from HGDC, HG Designs Crochet. And the pullover is called Example because it's the um, the example that she uses for um, a workbook that she's writing at the moment to teach designers how to grade patterns. And um, last week I showed you the beginning of the front piece and now I finished the front. And it is definitely the front because the back, even though it basically has the same kind of shaping, it'll be a tad longer so that when you sew it together, the fronts will come forward a little bit and the neckline will be higher in the back than in the front. Um, 
At first I was a bit worried the neck would be too small so I changed it a bit and now I think it's almost too big but I don't think it'll really be too big because we will crochet two rounds inside the neckline and I think that should make it probably exactly perfect and if I still think it's a bit wide I might add another round of crochet inside the neckline but otherwise I'm really really happy with um, how it sits and how it fits and especially how it looks. I love the two yarns together and that's um, when I was talking about the mitts I'm crocheting for my cousin, knitting for my cousin, she picked the same yarn that I'm working on with this pullover. Um, but look how different the yarns look. It's so interesting. So it's exactly the same yarn because I'm using the DK weight for her mittens and I'm using the DK weight for the pullover. By the way, the black is a four-ply yarn. Um, it's, it, these are the same colors and still they look so different, but still they work together. So if I knit myself the same mittens, I could wear them together with a pullover. Um, the DK weight yarn is a uh, 150 gram ball and the four-ply is a 100 gram ball, but they have the same yardage. So this is what I have left from crocheting the front piece. Um, as I said, the back is a bit longer, so I'm not quite sure whether the two bolts will be enough, but if not, I can use those leftovers to finish the back. And then I guess I'm pretty sure that one more ball of yarn in each um, color will be enough for the sleeves, especially as the pullover is fairly wide. I have very short arms, so I'm pretty sure for that bit, um, one ball will be enough. And this is the back. So um, I think the colors uh, come out differently. I have the feeling that the red is a bit more mixed up in this one. And with this, there's, there's a lot of the red in the middle, at least at the moment, it might still change, I don't know. But um, there's quite a bit of red here and here. Um, I still like it, I still like it a lot and um, can't wait to finish that pullover. Yeah, then on to my blankets. I worked a bit on my dinosaur blanket and these are all the pieces I have so far. Doesn't look too impressive, but I have finished the faces and that's always so much work with the eyes and the horns and especially with the um, sewing them on. And that's the second one and that's the third one. So now I have three more dinosaur faces. I also crocheted one of those plain squares. So that means now I have three, four, five, six. That was dinosaur face number one. So I have six of the faces. I need another six. And I have two of those plain squares. I only need six of those. And I have two of these triangles and I am going to need 10 of these. So still a lot of work to do, but I'm quite happy with what I managed to do last week. This is, by the way, six ply opal sock yarn, one of their rainbow, for no, not rainbow, rainforest colors. And, um, and for the dinosaur faces, I'm using various DK weight yarns. And some of them are leftovers like the red one so there will only be one red dinosaur because that yarn's gone now and then the last project i'm going to show you is the optic blanket our knit along um, i have six out of nine squares that i'm going to knit together and then i'll start the next nine squares um, and then in the end i will sew those nine square squares <laughs> together this is the one I knit last week. Um, another Opal DK sock yarn. Um, yeah, and I, I'm, I really enjoy knitting on that and adding colors and mixing things up and um, can't wait to have a finished blanket. Oh, well, I'll have to wait quite a bit because the plan is to do one square every week and be finished by the end of the year. And that's still some time to go. Okay. It's almost, it's already more than half an hour, but I'll just quickly show you um, 
a few of the colors that arrived today and the ideas that I have um, for knitting from this book. So there's a beautiful baby jacket in this book that I really like to knit. And it's one of those patterns that are not probably not the easiest to knit because you knit in many different directions on such a small piece, but it makes the colors come out so interestingly. And I am planning to knit that in this color. Oops. I think these are very nice and bright colors that I hope will look really happy on a baby. And also the orange and green um, mean that it's not a typically boy or girl color. So any baby can wear this. Basically, any baby can be wear any color, but you know what I'm talking about. And then the other idea I had is um, there's a pullover in here that looks like this. So you have a solid color for the front and back, and you have a stripy yarn for the sleeves. It's a bit like her sock sleeves pattern in, in that the only the sleeves have the sock yarn. But the, the, um, it's a different style and the, the sleeves are added differently. Don't know how to say that. And then you have also this pattern that runs, runs um, round in a spiral down the sleeve. Now, my idea was instead of using a single color, which I don't do a lot, I um, found when I looked at the colors before I got the yarn, we, we, you can already look at the colors online, um, there's this color from the beauty series that I really like. And then with the new um, series, Joy, you have this color. And it's basically the same colors, um, only organized differently, plus the white in this. So I was thinking if I did the front and back in that color and the sleeve in that color, plus the spiral pattern, that'd be really fun. And then when, when I looked at the yarn today, I realized that those two colors, you could do the exact same thing. And it's again my colors. So I'm already knitting the, the cowl in this color, but it, they really look together nicely. They work together nicely. So yeah, we'll see. But of course, this is my favorite color in the whole mix. Um, so just very quickly, in case you're interested, beautiful blue, beautiful green. And then we have a pink that was already in the subscription. Um, we had that as one of the subscription yarns. Um, and then there's this red and green and one of the brown gray colors. Yeah. So that is everything. I worked on everything that's new in the shop. Um, and I hope you enjoyed watching this episode and I will see you in the next one.